The formal name for this class of medications is GLP-1 agonists. Drugs like semaglutide and terzepatide fall into this group, and there are many other similar medications in the development pipeline. But the long-term question still out there is, what do these medications do to our bodies, both good and bad? So for answers, I interviewed several different specialists. So let's start with the benefits across multiple body systems. These are newer medications in, in a sense for obesity management. They activate certain hormones in the, in the body that help with decreasing the contractility of the stomach so your stomach can't expand as much and hold as much volume of food and it slows down digestion so you get fuller on smaller portions of meal. And Dr. Suki Singh, a Henry Ford Health Obesity Medicine Specialist adds, There's also a positive feedback to the brain which results in decreased food cravings, that food noise, that common word that we're hearing on social media now which again helps with decreasing the calorie intake. One of the first things people want to know is if they're going to have to take these medications forever. The goal is very individualized to the patient and where their disease is, because if you're talking about a patient who's class one obesity, they may need to lose that 15, 20 pound weight to get going on that physical activity. But when you're talking to a patient who's class three obesity, they need to lose 100 pounds. It may be for a longer duration. It may not be short term, and you may need to combine it with bariatric surgery. A sentiment echoed by Henry Ford Health dietitian Allegra Picano. These medications are supposed to be kind of a, a temporary helper to help with weight loss, but again, they're not a long-term fix. Diet and lifestyle changes are going to be really important for that sustainable weight loss. And when sustained, that weight loss has a profound effect on your entire body. Take your kidneys, for example. Henry Ford Health kidney specialist Dr. Megan Roche says, So what we've learned recently is that the GLP-1s actually do slow the rate of decline of kidney function. They reduce the amount of protein in the urine. Um, and they decrease the number of people who die of kidney disease overall. And it's very exciting for the nephrology world because we haven't had a lot of drugs that actually do slow the progression of kidney disease to date. And what about your heart? Henry Ford Health cardiologist Dr. Herb Aronow says, They have a beneficial effect on the heart. They seem to reduce the chance of developing heart failure or improve function in people who have heart failure. They lower blood pressure, uh, both that top number systolic and that bottom number diastolic. They lower the bad cholesterol and they raise the good cholesterol. And ultimately, that translates into better outcomes. So people on GLP-1s are less likely to die from heart and vascular disease or for any cause, less likely to have a stroke, less likely to have a heart attack. I would say that in, in my career that statins are probably one of the biggest blockbuster drugs that we've seen, biggest advances in my field. Um, and I think that GLP-1s are poised to eclipse that. So this really is a major breakthrough for patients who have diabetes, for patients who are overweight or obese. Uh, we have not seen this kind of risk reduction uh, across the board. And people who are already on many other important medications uh, in many, many years, if ever. Another benefit the media has picked up on is being termed ozempic babies. Here's Henry Ford Health ob Dr. Anna Marie Vilkins to explain. It is biologically plausible that a GLP-1 agonist uh, can improve your fertility uh, by the indirect mechanism of decreasing your weight and improving ovulation. So therefore, you know, an ozempic baby kind of makes sense because you're, if you're losing the weight, if you started overweight, you're ovulating more regularly. And thus, there you go. However, if you do become pregnant and you are on a GLPA1, uh, we would recommend discontinuation of that medication. And it certainly is not recommended that patients be on them when they are trying to conceive. And it's actually recommended that because uh, these medications, sometimes some of the side effects are nausea and vomiting, which may therefore affect the absorption of your combined birth control pill or any birth control pill you're taking, uh, that you make sure that you are using adequate contraception if you are experiencing that nausea and vomiting. Now, finally, there's also preliminary information suggesting there may be positive effects on our brain and nervous systems, including effects on Alzheimer's and even Parkinson's, although I have to say this area does need much more study. Now, as I've said, Pretty much with every medication or treatment in medicine, if it has a positive effect, it will also have a negative effect. Now, in the case of these new super weight loss drugs, many of the negatives are potentially still out there, yet to be discovered. But we already do know some of them, and I'll have that story today at 5 p.m. Back to you.